Hi everyone, time for another watch review. Today looking at something else in my collection. This is my uh, my Omega Planet Ocean 2500. Uh, this is the previous generation of the Planet Ocean uh, with uh, the more traditional um, for, for um, Omega that is, um, solid case back. Um, it's got the older coaxial movement of the 2500. This is a 2500C I believe. And um, while the serial number does tell me that it's uh, you know, a little bit of a later of a C, which is a good thing uh, because they make constant improvements to the movement. Um, the Planet Ocean, uh, one of my favorite watches of all time, frankly. It's got uh, a great combination of traditional style and modern style. Uh, goes great with uh, lots of different outfits, lots of different occasions. Tends to be a very well made, very dependable watch. Sits great on the wrist. Um, the orange bezel and, and numerals I really like because it gives it just a little extra punch without being, you know, too much. Um, stands out uh, from, you know, some of the other typical diver watches out there that are, you know, to be honest, a dime a dozen. Uh, I chose this over the newer 8500, um, you know, honestly because of the price. Um, I, I was able to find this one again here in Tokyo for a very reasonable price. Uh, a couple of years ago I picked this up brand new in box for about 2500 US dollars. Um, really can't be beat you know, for that kind of price. And since I've had it, um, I've absolutely um, loved this watch. Um, it, it doesn't get tons of wear because for me it's kind of special, um, but that doesn't mean that I, I don't enjoy wearing it a lot. Um, being the 2500s, um, you know, wearing it is very comfortable because it is much thinner than the newer 8500 um, models. It sits uh, a lot closer on the wrist. The case itself is not nearly as thick as, as the current ones. Um, let's be honest, let's take a quick uh, quick look at how thick it is. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's about 15, 15 and a half, right depending on where I move this thing. Yeah, 15 and a half at the, to at the top of the domed crystal. Um, the actual width, I think, as everybody knows, these are about um, 45 millimeters across. Yeah. There you go, 45, thereabouts. Um, yeah, great size. Um, so it's come from list on the wrist and put it on real quickly and you can see how, how it does sit. Um, you know, I have, let's see, about a seven and a quarter inch wrist or uh, 19 centimeters. Um, it sits great for me. Uh, this rubber strap is uh, really comfortable and cuts down on some of the weight. If you have ever worn uh, an Omega Planet Ocean on steel bracelet, it's a it's you know it's a quality bracelet. It feels really nice, but it doesn't make the watch perhaps um, you know a bit heavy you know to to wear all day. It's not it's not really a bad thing. A lot of people like a lot of heft to their watches, but this has plenty on, on the rubber as it is. Um, and you know I'm, I'm not shy of, of heavy weights on my on my hands. I mean, you know one of my other hobbies has been bodybuilding for the past 30 years, so I can certainly carry my weights. But, uh, you know, in a watch that I'm going to wear all day, sometimes I want the watch to kind of disappear and not think about it. And sometimes I want it to be there when I want to look at it and admire it. So th this has a, a beautiful compromise of, of lots of wrist presence, but not, not overwhelming in, in any way. Um, the, rubber, um, the rubber band on this thing, so we'll call it a rubber band, you know, is, uh, you know, really high quality as you expect from Omega. It has some slight wave patterning on the back which is evocative of, of their, their C theme that they've carried over the years, um, while at the same time also being a nice way to uh, keep it from getting too sticky in the summertime. Um, the orange stitching, uh, counter stitching, is a really nice uh, touch along with the Omega logo on the bracelet, on, on the clasp. Um, the uh, standout feature on a lot of these uh, for some people is the, the 10 o'clock helium release valve. Again, gives it a little bit of a unique look. Um, this thing being an Omega, uh, you know, early Omegas, is, you know, the movement is a, a modified ETA. Um, but that said, it's probably the, the smoothest and finest ETA I've ever experienced. Um, winding it is, you know, very, very similar, if not the same, to uh, my Rolex um, Explorer. The kind of smoothness that it has. The threads on the, uh, on the case itself catch. Uh, you know, you can't, you almost can't perceive when it starts to catch. It just does, and it screws right in. Those, those, for me, those are the kind of differences uh, between, you know, your multi-thousand-dollar Swiss watches and uh, some of the Japanese watches that I love so much. It's just those little extra bits that that, that come with the uh, the extra price tag. Um, 
but you know, you want more, you're gonna pay more. So that's just the way it is, <laughs> I guess. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy watches of all different tiers. And if you look at my channel, you can see I have watches um, pretty much all over the place, um, price-wise, and I enjoy all of them. Um, you know, there's something to be said for, you know, higher quality watches and the way it feels in the wrist. At the same time, there's something to be said for having a, a slightly cheaper watch that you can really go out there and, and do whatever, um, wherever, and not have to worry about uh, digging up your watch, losing it, or, or even someone trying to grab it from you. Um, not going to happen with a, with a less expensive Orient or Seiko. But of course, there are times when, uh, you know, an Omega or, or Rolex is, is what you want to have. Um, so, so I have all of them, <laughs> you know, to be able to mix it up a little bit. So again, um, no longer made. Uh, if you can find them on the used market uh, in good condition, uh, you know, it's a great pickup. It's a little more classic than the current design. It's more toolish than the current design. You know, no ceramic bezel, no display case back, thinner, thinner case, um, arguably a more robust movement, if not more accurate or in-house E. I mean, this is, you know, arguably, you know, a modified ETA and some people get their, you know, their, their knickers in a twist about that. But for me, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, but, you know, it's a great watch for the money if you can find it. Um, on the second hand market or even you know perhaps sitting somewhere at a jeweler's that, that hasn't been sold for some reason um, like I did uh, you know really great value for the money great style timeless classic toolish but dressy uh, and it's an Omega you know really can't go wrong so I hope you enjoyed this very quick video on this this watch and uh, you know as, as always uh, everything in my collection that I show on the, these videos I either currently own or, or have owned and perhaps sold on and uh, this is one that will be staying with me, for sure. The Omega 2500C, Planet Ocean.